my, my juices flow all the time. Absolutely, absolutely. You know as much as I know. Right now, we've been able to stuff to stuff. The curse is broken. NC State fans, finally. <laughs> finally. Hey, happy Thanksgiving. I mean, that's a triple play. The Wolfpack ain't for soft. It ain't for soft people. It's here. The overlap season. We have football still going on, basketball starting, and this is Law of the Wolf. I am your host, Joe Giglio. Scott Wood will be joining us today for a conversation about the NC State men's basketball team. Big shouts to Westmore and the NC State women who knocked off then number two UConn over at Reynolds Coliseum on Sunday. Sanaya Rivers with 33 points and just an amazing game for the Wolfpack to pay back UConn for the NCAA tournament exit from two years ago at the neutral site up in Bridgeport, Connecticut. So great to see a quick start for Westmore and a newly shaped roster there. We'll get into some more women's hoops this season as we go along. I hear you out there with your requests, but let's get into a little bit of football here to start because NC State won their third game in a row this past Saturday and only for the second time since 2001 down in Winston-Salem with a 26-6 win over Wake Forest. This game, I'm not going to lie to you, probably went the way it should have went, given where Wake Forest is right now and the problems that they have on offense, and given where NC State's defense is trending. I know we spent a lot of time last week talking about MJ Morris, talking about the quarterback position, talking about Brennan Armstrong, talking about what happens moving forward at the quarterback position. I understand that. But the truth of the matter is that NC State has really turned their season around and it has started on the defensive end. Wake Forest could not block anyone on Saturday. NC State's defense, led by Tony Gibson, their defense coordinator, was dialed in Peyton Wilson, Jalen Scott, Sean Brown. They've really figured some things out on the defensive end. And when you go back and you look at the four and three starts this year, and you go back and you look at the turning point of the season, the loss at at Duke, you start thinking about this team and the problems that they had. Honestly, I know the issues on offense, but defense to me is what has been cleaned up. And just this is from the yellow pad. I wrote this week for Saturday road. You can always check that out at saturdayroad.com. NC state's defense at the beginning of the year had given up 29 uh, plays of 20 of 20 yards or more in the first seven games. They've only had three since they also had six plays of 50 yards or more think back to that notre dame game what a catastrophe that was for nc state's defense six plays of 50 yards or more in the first six games duke hit the two big plays in that game they haven't had nc state's defense hasn't given up any of 50 plus since that's very good they've only given up three of 20 plus since and all three of those were in the clemson game to hold miami to six points and then to hold uh, Wake Forest to the six points. An excellent job by Tony Gibson's defense. I think the defense has been uh, really the, the the biggest change for NC State. You know, the, the way that they started the year, they were kind of giving up the big gash plays. They were out of position. You're looking at it and you're going, how are they going to solve this problem? Luckily for them, Gibson has and Dave Doran. They've won a certain way. And I think that's the best part of this. You know, I've given Dave Doran all the credit since the messaging from the Duke game cut down on the penalties, cut down on the turnovers, control what you can control, don't beat yourself. And part of that is on the defensive end, being in the right spots, not having the busts, not giving up the long runs. You've seen them clean all of that up. And now they take their show on the road to Virginia Tech on Saturday for a 3.30 kickoff in Blacksburg. Not going to be an easy environment. I do think this is a good spot for State, however, with Virginia coming up next for Virginia Tech. I also wonder with Virginia Tech, this was a season where they weren't exactly supposed to be good. Um, and, and if you look at who they've lost to in the league, they've only lost to Louisville and Florida State in the league. So at four and two, uh, it's not necessarily a mirage, uh, but I do think they've taken care of business, which after the year that they had last year is commendable. Uh, but I also do think NC State has a better roster than Virginia Tech. This is one of those dangerous games where you use the word should with NC State. I do think they should win this football game. And I think they will if their defense plays the same way that it has in the past three games. I do think they will. 
if Brendan Armstrong continues what he did on Saturday against Wake Forest. And look, I, I know that the storyline was Brendan and the way that he played against Wake in part because of the unusual situation with MJ Barris. Uh, if, if you if you hadn't been following, and I know you have here on Law of the Wolf, but MJ Morris' decision to trance to redshirt, so the slip of the tongue there, his decision to redshirt in order to save the year of eligibility. And I, I think we all kind of can predict this ends with him transferring, even though the family and he have said otherwise. Um, you know, that that's... Even Dave Doran said on Thursday of last week that he was surprised and not because of the decision to redshirt because the, the family and MJ had talked about that since the Marshall game when he was inserted into the starting lineup and had given the team the spark that he did. Rather that after beating Clemson, after beating Miami, he still made the decision to do that. So I like the way that Brandon played. We saw a little bit more of the running from Brandon. I think that's going to be what his feature is. I'm not going to lie to you when you don't have a backup. Um, I don't know how much they will tell Brennan to dial that back, but obviously they didn't against Wake Forest. So Brendan Armstrong, it's, it's hard not, not to admire what he was able to do, uh, you know, benched and then comes back in this game, throws for a touchdown, runs for one, ran for 96 yards in this game. I, I thought NC State's defense truly was the story here in the way that they played against Wake Forest. And again, this is not a team that NC State normally beats on the road. So that was great to see. And you look at uh, defensively what they were able to do. That's what you're supposed to do against bad teams. And, and unfortunately for, unfortunately right now for Wake Forest, they're a bad team. But the one thing you can control, you look at it again with the penalties, only two for NC State again. They're 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 four and two in the league now. In their first two conference games, they had 21 penalties combined in the losses to Louisville and to Duke. And since then, they have dramatically reduced the penalties. They aren't even an issue in the past three games. Again, give yourself a chance. Don't beat yourself. I have uh, so I'll give you a prediction here. Since I have picked against NC State the past three weeks. I will pick against the Wolfpack again here. Um, sure. Yeah, I'll pick against the Wolfpack again. Uh, Virginia Tech actually favored in this game. Slightly surprised by that. Let's go with another low scoring game, though. Let's go with um, let's go with Virginia Tech 14, NC State 10. How's about that? How's about that? There's a wink and a nod to my friend, Josh Goodson. Uh <laughs> And speaking of my friend, Josh Goodson, listen, it, it, this is a difficult market right now. I'm not going to lie to you, but maybe you need a cash out refi. Maybe you don't even know where you are in the process of, of trying to get a home loan. Go to rtpmortgage.com or even better, give Josh a call 252-361-1415. That's 252-361-1415. As I like to say, you don't know what you don't know. Josh is an expert though rtpmortgage.com for all of your mortgage and home loan needs. Give Josh a call, 252-361-1415. And if you want to be swagged out for Christmas, man, have I got a gift idea for you. Go to homefieldapparel.com and check out the new satin bomber jackets that they're offered. Look at the wolf logo right there on the breast. Red jacket, white buttons, that thing is super sharp. Do yourself a favor. Go to homefieldapparel.com. Use the promo code OG23. OG23 is going to save you 15% off on your initial purchase. So go to homefieldapparel.com. Line up that sweet jacket. Throw it in your cart. Save 15%. Homefield Apparel, great gift ideas. You'll be ready this holiday season, and you'll be ready for this winter because, man, it's getting cold here in Raleigh. There is no Law of the Wolf podcast without Hayes Lancaster. NC State, big NC State supporter. You see him in the RV lot. He's involved with the collective. Hayes does a great job for NC State. He'll do a great job for you. He does not believe in contracts, but he does believe in saving you money. So go to bugsbite.com. Punch in your zip code. You'll see all kinds of ways to save and it's not just mosquito treatment, okay? The moisture under your house, I had this issue, mold, mildew. You don't want it. So get that moisture barrier under your house. Make sure you're protecting your number one investment. I also had mice in my attic. 
not proud of that, but it, I did. And I had to get rid of them. And I was able to connect with Hayes Mosquito Authority, Pest Authority. See that? That's where the pest comes in. So again, go to bugsbite.com and you will be helped with all of those things. Especially, especially tell them. The OG OG, tell them. Law of the Wolf sent me. Joining me on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline is Scott Wood. Scott, welcome back to Law of the Wolf. Appreciate you joining me again for year number two here on this NC State podcast. You've been busy working these games for, for the ACC Network Plus, doing the NC State first two games of the year. What's it like uh, before we get into uh, your assessment of what we've seen from NC State basketball? What's it like being a, a big time uh, color commentator for ESPN and the ACC Network? Well, I wouldn't call it big time. Uh, I've, I have told everybody I have done some color color commentating on the high school side. So I actually have done a little bit. You know, it's a little different when you know that, you know, you've got a bigger reach. Uh, being sure. that it's on ESPN Plus. But, you know, Andrew makes it really easy for me. He's high, high level. So it's it's been a lot of fun. Uh, as a lot of people have found out, it's it's hard for me not to say we during a broadcast, but okay. I've slowly gotten better at it. So I got to remember, hey, I got to stay a little bit more neutral. 10 years since your last game, still working on those pronouns. I like it. Hey, man. <laughs> well, I just, it's, I've, it's just come natural. I mean, I've, I just always, I've been, everybody knows I'm critical of NC State. I want NC State to find success. You know, I put on the jersey. So it's just natural for me to say we. All right. Well, so far we've seen two games from NC State. So far we've seen two good things. 72-59 win over the Citadel in the opener. And then last Friday, uh, I think the game that's kind of caught some people's eye because Abilene Christian, they beat him by 20 points, 84-64. Abilene Christian beat Oklahoma State in their opener this year. So obviously a team that has some sort of talent and skill, and NC State handled them. Um, l- let's just start with what you've been impressed with thus far in these two games and and I'll, I'll leave it as an open-ended question for you and, and see what kind of pops into your head yeah I, I mean the first thing i think is the depth this is an yep. nc state team you know and I, I'm, I i will go as far as probably my favorite nc state team just from a stylistic you know point of view that i i enjoy seeing the depth i enjoy seeing more guys come in and out i think it kind of molds to Kevin Keats' style of play of wanting to get guys in there quickly so that, you know, he can kind of do the defensive style that he wants. Now, I also said at the beginning of the year, you know, a lot of people asked me, I'd been to a few practices, you know, is this team going to be any good? That's what everybody keeps asking me. And the way I said it is, I think they are a better team this year than they are last year. Okay. okay. A better team. Team is, is the, the way I'm working here. Okay. I don't think they are as talented I don't think that necessarily results in more wins, but I think they're going to be a better team. If you kind of like, you know, a little bit more ball movement, a couple paint touches, some things like that, I think this is the team that you'll enjoy to watch. You know, last year they had elite level talent in Terquavion and Jarkel. They'll take you off the bounce. They could score. Now, when this team gets into a, you know, tight battle and we're going possession for possession, I may get a little worried because they don't have that, you know, take you off the bounce and be able to create and just bail you out. So that is my one worry. But I think from a team perspective, I think they're much better. They're going to share the ball a little bit more than what we've been accustomed to seeing. A little bit less pick and roll. Uh, So it's going to be interesting to see going forward. I was impressed in the opener with both DJ Burns and Michael O'Connell. Let's start with Burns. I know a lot of people have said to me, "Uh, Joe, uh, did DJ lose (laughs) anyway? And I'm like... Look, if you were hoping for like the Rich Howell transformation between, uh, you know, his sophomore and junior years, you, you're you're kind of sadly mistaken. That that's you're going to be disappointed. Um, but I think DJ knows how to use his weight, and as long as they're not playing at altitude, I, I, I like his chances of being able to stay on the floor. But uh, it, it's undeniable, though, at this point, he can score the basketball. He knows what he's doing with his back to the basket. Uh, that's what I. That was my main takeaway from the opener was the way that he, you know, you need a stopper, right? Like you need someone who you're like, hey, I need a basket. I need to. I need to stop this drought. And I feel like that's a nice luxury that they have. They can kick it into DJ, and he can get you some points and and make make everything look a little bit brighter. 
Yeah, I mean, he's uh, even a couple possessions of the last game against Abilene Christian. I mean, he just he scores the ball in different varieties. He has such good touch for a big man. He can finish with a floater. Now, I will say I've never seen him actually shoot a right hand jump hook over the left shoulder. But again, I've always said if if you are elite at what you do and you can always get to a specific hand, it's hard to stop, especially on the defensive end. So I just don't see anybody out there that can really stop or slow him down without trapping and getting the ball out of his hands. Now, the one thing that, you know, I'm going to critique him for is, you know, what is he going to do on the defensive end? You know, he hasn't really been challenged. There's not been a lot of pick and roll action, a lot of pick and pop guys. Although Abilene Christian did have a stretch five last game, they still didn't really isolate him in a pick and roll action. So again, kind of going forward for him and where he's going to probably struggle a little bit is, you know, you, you see the Clemson game last year where, P.J. Hall is, you know, picking, popping the mess out of him, and it's just hard for him to get to that closeout. But with that being said, there's only a select amount of teams that are going to have somebody like that that's going to give him fits. Yeah, you got to hide him a little bit defensively, and that that's fine. I mean, that's kind of part of it, right? I mean, in theory, they had to hide you defensively, too. I mean, you made up for it in other ways. Easy, buddy. Easy. <laughs> Listen, I just want to make sure you're paying attention here early that you're on your uh, you're on your toes here early on the law of the wolf. Listen, I'm, I'm most proud statistic of my <laughs> life is that I finished top 15 in blocks when I left NC State. I'm probably nowhere. I'm probably not even in the top 20 now. Top 15 blocks when I left NC State. Hands down, mm. my favorite statistic anybody's ever given me. And Levi Watkins till this day. We'll talk about that. Whether or not I was beat off the dribble every time, it was no hustle, no quit. Finished from behind to, with a block. You knew how to recover. Um, one thing that we should be worried about with DJ Birds, you said he could score in a variety of ways. He hasn't attempted a free throw yet in two games. Does that seem odd to you? That is a little bit odd. I, I And I honestly, even though I've called the first two games, I would have never expected that to be the case. Um but again, that's that's one of the things with this team that Jarkel and Traquavion forced so many teams into fouls and a little bit of foul trouble and were able to get to the line, you know, especially going forward in tight games. You know, are they going to be able to create that contact and get some teams into foul trouble? And I think DJ's the one that can probably do that more than anybody. I mentioned O'Connell, the transfer from Stanford was one that I was impressed with in in the first two games in part because he had struggled so much against Mount Olive and with the five turnovers, which you know, I don't. I don't think uh, Kevin Keats brought in Michael O'Connell from Stanford to be Jarkel Joiner, obviously, but they they did bring him in to take care of the ball as a sixth year player. Um, you know, to not make mistakes. So I think some people saw the the Mount Olive game and thought, "Ooh, this is not good." Uh, but he has he has acquitted himself nicely with eight assists and I think just one turnover in the first two games. Yeah, I I, I thoroughly like his game. Now I I got to see him a little bit earlier on than what most people did because I was able to watch a couple practices, but he's not going to do anything that wows you. That's kind of how I've explained him. You know, he's just going to do everything the right way. He's going to take care of the ball. The majority of the time I get, you know, the exhibition where everybody kind of got a little bit freaked out, but I would also say, especially with the team as a whole, they don't have like an elite, you know, point guard. That's going to always bring the ball up. I think you've seen Jaden Taylor bring the ball up. O'Connell's brought the ball up. Horn's brought the ball up. Casey's brought the ball up. So it's going to be a collective group when it comes to the ball handling. But the one thing, especially with O'Connell, is, you know, I've, I've said it many times to a lot of people, and if any young person is out there listening to this podcast, if you do not, you know, if you're an elite shooter and you shoot the ball at a high level and you're not making shots that day, what are you going to bring to the table? You know, are you going to be an elite defender, a elite leader, rebounder, passer? Bring something else to the table. And I think the one thing that you get with O'Connell is he's always going to have effort. So even if he misses five straight shots, you're going to get effort on the defensive end. We've seen a couple of times where he, you know, got an offensive rebound or, you know, created for somebody else. So I think that's one of the things that you're always going to get. You're going to get that effort. Mo's the same way. Again, I don't think he's going to have, you know, 14 and 16 rebound games the whole season. But he's always going to give you effort. He's always going to give you a couple extra possessions, which is something that this team's going to need. All right, Scott, let's let's pay some quick bills here. I know you're excited about that because, you know, in the OG media world now, we we have to take care of ourselves. We have to keep the lights on. So I, I know you can appreciate that. But uh, I know that uh, 
you know, you have a day job. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. We can do that this year on the Law of the Wolf podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Things we're allowed to do. But first, listen, you need experts. Don't fall for some billboard on the side of the road that's like, hey, sell me your home for a guaranteed offer. Don't be dumb. Go to the experts. Go to Hometown Realty. Go to myhtr.com. They have six locations from here to the beach. They have more than 250 agents. All right. Also, 60% of their business is in new homes. So you don't get 250 agents on your team by accident. Go with the experience. Go with Hometown Realty. Go to myhtr.com. And then maybe you're like me. Maybe you get one too many traffic tickets. Uh, it's not good for you. Don't do that. Uh, maybe you want to sell a business. Maybe you got to close on a home. Maybe you work through Scott Wood. You want to close on a home. Well, Whitaker and Hamer. wh.lawyer. They have the world's greatest URL. Josh Whitaker is a big state fan. Trust me when I tell you, state people, you need lawyers out there. Josh is one of them. So go check them out. It is the world's greatest URL. wh.lawyer. And of course, if you are going over to any games when Scott Wood has to go and get ready, for the big game on a, on the ACC Network Plus, go over to Breeze Through and get yourself some dark roast coffee. Stay awake for those late tips, or maybe you're you're not you maybe you're not working the game. There you go tailgate. Get yourself some ice. Get yourself some beers. Get yourself some cold beverages. Chill out in the parking lot. Breeze Through has you for all of your needs. Check them out right there across from the arena. On the corner of Trinity and Edwards Mill Road, Breeze Through, big thanks to Adam for all of his support of all of our podcasts here on the OG Media Company. All right, Scott, see, that that, that wasn't that hard, was it? No, I don't mind those. You know, I, I can tell you, the one thing that I've learned about NC State people is they support other NC State people. So anybody, absolutely, anybody that is willing to support my guy, Joe Giglio and the squad over here uh, earns my business. That's for sure. Perfect. I love it. All right. So. So far, we haven't seen NC State really play a team where I'm like, yeah, the Abilene Christian thing. I, I like how they handled their business in that game. Uh, that, that was nice. As I mentioned, Abilene Christian had, had beaten Oklahoma State in the opener. So that's good. Um, but I, I'm, I'm curious when you look at the schedule and you have three more games for the uh, mothership there. I'm curious when you look at the schedule, when do you say, OK, th this is when we'll learn a little bit more about what this NC State team is going to be. Yeah, I mean, the first one that comes to mind is um, there's a little stretch there. I think it's Vanderbilt, and I'm drawing a blank on who that other is. Another P5. Could be either BYU or Arizona State when they play out in Vegas. Yeah, so, I mean, you've got two matchups there. Um, you know, St. Louis is coming. I believe that game could – I think it might be the Reynolds game. Uh, but I think th that's going to be the first one that really kind of piques my interest because, again, I think – this team is a very, very good collective group. Mm -hmm. But again, when we need a bucket and it's coming down to, you know, a two minute stretch where it's a close game, who is somebody that can just, you know, break somebody down and be able to score? Now, I think DJ is a very good bailout guy. But again, if I am a coach on the sidelines, Excuse I'm going to I'm, I'm look at them and say, you know what, two minutes in the game, I'm not letting him get a touch. And if he does get a touch, I'm getting it out of his hands. So, again, I think it's just going to come down to who is going to be that guy. So it's going to be interesting to see, especially when we get into some tight ones, what they're going to do and, and kind of who they're going to you know target. Now, obviously, I think the nice part is they've got probably five guys that, you know, they've got a hot hand where there's, you know, Jaden Taylor the other night, you know, DJ Horn's one that can get hot. Maybe it's a Casey Marcel, Michael O'Connell. Like, they've got a list of guys that are capable to score. I just don't know if they're, you know – elite off the bounce guys that can just go get you a bucket yeah horn is the one i feel like will ultimately be their best lead guard that that that's what it feels like to me without having seen practice uh just kind of knowing his makeup a little bit i know taylor from butler uh has has had a better scoring game against abilene christian he he's a guy i know those are the two in particular casey's just steady right like kind of like o'connell but obviously you're going to count on casey to, to take more threes and make more threes um, I, I like that the role that he's in as kind of an elder statesman. I think that's a good, uh, good parts there. I, I, you know, the thing about this team, I wonder, we, we don't get MJ Rice or I don't think, I don't anticipate seeing him much this year. If we do see him, um, there's, there's some, uh, mental health issues there that are, that are going on kind of behind the scenes and, and he's trying to deal with them and we should all understand that and, and give him the, the space that he needs to solve those. 
Um, but I do think he was kind of a he is a dynamic athletic player who can try to can kind of change the equation a little bit for from what we're seeing on the parts on the current roster. Without Rice, what do you think is a realistic expectation for this team? You said it could be a better group or a better team than the one last year that made the NCAA tournament. Is that a realistic expectation for this team to see it finish, let's say, in the top third of the ACC and and make the NCAA tournament again like they did last year? And, and that's really kind of the interesting, and, and it's a hard one for me to just pull the trigger and say this is an NCAA tournament team. Now, I will say, I think Abilene Christian is a good team, but mm-hmm. we also have to understand that Oklahoma State was without their point starting point guard and backup point guard that game. So mm-hmm. they were missing a big piece, and it showed – because Oklahoma State played the worst probably 37 minutes of basketball I've, I've witnessed. <laughs> right. um, but Abilene Christian still won that game. So they are a solid team. But I, I think they're capable. I don't think they're going to have a high ceiling like last year. I think last year they had a much higher ceiling. State. But, yes. But I mm-hmm. would say I would say that I think they can make the tournament. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they creep in these ACC standings just because I think as a group it's going to be a better chemistry you know, there's going to be a lot of touches. You know, everybody's going to kind of be pleased because, you know, the ball's going to move a little bit more. And I think they're going to be a better defensive group as a whole. So they're going to give some people fits, especially from the defensive end. It just then becomes, can they score the basketball? You know, um, so that's my one red flag with the team is that they're going to be able to have that, you know, they don't need one elite score, two elite scores. They just have to be able to do it as a group. You know, the, the hardest teams to guard are the teams that have four or five double figure guys. And I think they have the capability to be that. So, you know, I, I think early on, my first instinct before I saw a game was, you know, I think they're going to be one of those kind of, it's an easy way out, but a bubble team. Mm-hmm. You know, I think they're going to be kind of flirting with that bubble all year. But I think, you know, after seeing the first two games, again, it was the competition elite. No, but I think they have the, the, the roster and the skill level and the chemistry to make an NCAA tournament. Before we get to uh, your thoughts on the rest of the ACC, and because you and I, we typically have a similar worldview for NC State, but we usually disagree about who will be the other teams in the league. So I I do want to get into that conversation. Dennis Parker has been a a nice surprise to me. I I didn't know what to expect from him. He's athletic, though. I I like his skill set. I I would like to see him be one of those guys who stays in the program and develops. I, I think he's got real potential. No, he's he's really good. I think the one thing that you're definitely going to see out of him is athleticism. Yeah, you know, he's he's still young, freshman. He's going to make mistakes. Uh, but again, I think the fact that he'll he'll make his mistake and continue to play hard is is what it's all about. And he's got a good head on his shoulders. Now, obviously, Mudiar has played phenomenal, and he's played you know a good amount of minutes at the four so far this year. So it's going to be kind of Interesting to see how you can get him out of the game at times. But I think, you know, even with MJ out, I think he's a very good piece for this team to get, you know, the the 10 to, you know, 17 minutes a game because he does, especially on the defensive end, I think he can cover up some mistakes that DJ may make at times. I think obviously you got Ben Middleton and Mo Diar sitting there. So I think that kind of three combination could come in and be a really good you know, defensive team, especially when DJ's out to, to kind of help them at times. Uh, but I think especially going forward again, I think the the main thing, is especially with the portal, NIL, all the other stuff that's going on in the landscape of college basketball, can you continue to keep them, you know, yeah. keep them happy and groom him to continue to get better. Uh, but again, I think he's one of those kids that has a good head on his shoulders. He's, he's going to continue to get better and he's going to continue to earn more minutes. So uh, it's been enjoyable to, to watch so far. It's been a slow start for Ben Middlebrooks, and uh, I'm I'm risking Kevin punching me the next time he sees me if I point out to Kevin. Just tell him, act like you're playing state, because the Clemson transfer had like the games of his life playing against NC State at the end of the year last year. So uh, I'm not worried about Middlebrooks. I'm I'm sure he'll figure some things out, uh, but it, it obviously he's been offset by Diara and the way that he's been able to rebound the basketball. You know, Kevin doesn't love to play two bigs at once. So that's going to be the issue. I think how much of that he tinkers with going forward. And I, I agree with you. I, I could see Parker playing some of that stretch for, uh, for the Wolfpack. Let's talk a little bit about the rest of the ACC. 
it's been such a slow start to the college basketball season in general. My gosh. Um, it's almost like it snuck up on ESPN that the the season was starting. Uh, I was delighted to see the Arizona Duke game last Friday, and I thought we learned a lot about Duke in an early game. I think I think you're probably with me, and that everyone thinks, "Oh, the Duke's going to win the league." I am not so sure that Jimmy Laranega doesn't have another one of those uh, rabbits up his hat because I'm looking at Duke. Man, they could use a they could use a Scott Wood on the wing. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of shooters over in Durham. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll give you that, but I, I am going to, you know, we don't agree on everything, but I am also not going to jump off of that Duke bandwagon right You're now. Not. Okay. I, I think they're going to be a very good team. I've always said a lot of these teams that win the national championship experience adversity, especially early on in the season, that Arizona team's not a bad team. Let's be very clear. Oh, no, no, no. I, I was impressed with Arizona. <laughs> now, I will say it's it's more impressive that they can go into Cameron and and get it done. Uh, even after the foul trouble to their big early in that game, which I had predicted. Um, but again, I, Cameron is also just a place. Yes, it has history. And I, let's be very clear. Cameron is just another place. So, uh, you know, I am still high on Duke. I think they're highly, highly talented. I think they still got to figure some things out and, and continue to match. I think they've got some upperclassmen there uh, that, that kind of takes care of some things and alleviates some pains. But they're, they're going to take some lumps early on. But I, I like to see them play that tough schedule early on to kind of figure out what they got. But long term, I think they're going to be fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not saying like, oh, my God, they're about to collapse like Carolina did last year. What I'm more of saying is I I, I don't love the makeup of their roster. I think they have some in, they, they are, will be fine in ACC play. They'll finish second or third. Uh, I actually think Miami really is going to win the league this year. I, um, they're just... I mean, they're hammer cocking people right now. Just, it's, I just, I like the way that they play. They're, they they play offense the right way, in my opinion. Uh, Omir is kind of a little bit of a cheat code. Nigel Pack um, and, and Cleveland, the transfer from Florida State, pop him in that lineup and it's like, oh, well, that's what it looks like when you get actual time to play. And <laughs> you're, you're not being constantly subbed out by your coach uh, at Florida State. So, uh, that that's my thought. How many how many teams do you think from the ACC will ultimately end up in the NCAA tournament? As we know, last year it, it was a talking point for the whole year. So I'm trying to figure out in the top, like top of my mind, I, I would there, say there five or five six last year. There was only five. Uh, I'd say five. Five is probably the safe guess again. Okay, well, that's um, not a lot. I have not seen Virginia play much, but I'd have to think Virginia is going to have to have a, a much better season this year. I don't see them having because last year they were just average in my opinion. Um for them. But obviously sure. Miami, Duke, Carolina. Let's throw state in that mix. And then I, I'd say you probably got Virginia sitting right there. Who would you say would the last one be? I like Clemson this I've year. I've heard good things about Florida yeah. State as well. Now Florida State had a has had some downtime but I heard some good things. I, I was watching some ACC network and I heard some good things there. I don't know if I'm ready to call them a tournament team again, but Clemson's just going to find a way to trip over their own feet. So <laughs> I'm just, uh, <laughs> just my opinion. All right. So when is your next call? You got Friday? Yep. Friday. Okay. And then you have two more after that? Yes, sir. Yep. All right. Then you'll be back here on Law of the Wolf next week. Yeah, I've always got time for this. Okay, perfect. And you have a day job. Well, let's talk a little bit about your day job. What do you What do you got going on? Uh, so a lot of people know I'm I'm in the mortgage business. Um, rates have dipped over the last week. It 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 brings pleasure to my face to tell everybody, <laughs> hey, home buying is rough right now, but the yeah. rates over the last week have dipped. Um, okay. But you know, I've been surrounded by I've got a really good team in place. You know, again, all of our wolf packers, we love helping some some other wolf packers and again we're we're the type of guys that we know there's a lot of a lot of opportunities out there we also know there's a lot of you know great rates out there you know the way we sell it is you know we're going to give elite customer service we're going to take care of you and if there's better options out there that don't end up being us we're going to shoot you straight so you know it's been an interesting time uh for me now i wasn't here in 08 which is what i keep hearing uh yeah. it's about 08 but you know 
we can also sit here and complain about it or we can stay positive and continue to go out there and try and find some business. So uh, it's been it's been a pleasure so far. Positive vibes only. You're really bad at your selling yourself, too, by the way. What is the name of the group that you work with and where can people find you? So I work with uh, North Point Bank. You can go in anywhere. You can go to my website, scottwood15.com. Uh, I, I tell everybody, you know, Josh Goodson's, we call him a competitor, but he's a good friend also within the industry. He does a lot of really good stuff with social media. You can find me on my social media. Any questions that you have, um, we can get those answered to you. So, you know, uh, I think the easiest way is to go to, to the website, Scottwood15. There's a link there where you can get connected with me. Um, but again, I'd love to have help anybody, even if you're, you know, think you're a few months out from buying a home, you know, it doesn't hurt for us to take a look and, and give yeah. you guys some some updates and maybe say, hey, we need to improve on this. Or we need to look at that. So uh, ultimately, look, we're here to help. That's, that's kind of how I tell everybody, you know, we may not be the best option for you, but again, we'll give you our our honest opinion. And before we say goodbye, Swish Elite, how's the how's the coaching going? It's been fun, man. Yeah. Um, we've got a huge announcement coming and I don't think I'm allowed to say it yet. We just signed we a contract. We have a huge announcement coming now. This is your <laughs> AAU basketball team that you run. Yeah. We're we, not just, allowed yeah. To play today. we just signed a contract. I can't say with who yet because um, it's Sneaker not fine. Company, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, we, but it's not final yet. We're, we're okay. also going to be adding two more teams. Last year, we did one team. We're going to add a 15 and a 16 new team, which we're going to announce. Um, I'll probably put on social media here in the next couple of weeks. The youths. Uh, Look at you. Yeah, we've got hey, we've got really good talent. Uh, so I've got uh, I've got five guys uh, that hold Division One offers. I've got three others that could probably pull a, a Division One offer this coming year. Um, but again, and I didn't know what to expect. You I did not know what to expect jumping into this world, but yeah. I have enjoyed it. I've got a, I got a really good group of kids and parents, um, and I, and I've enjoyed it, and they've got a lot better. So it's it's been a lot of fun. How do we figure out more information about the Swish Elite? So, so Swish Elite has its own handle, I believe it is literally SW15H. Um, you can go to the Instagram, you can go to Twitter, you can reach out. Um, you know, we did a camp, uh, almost. That's a little less than a month ago. We did a we did a camp in Raleigh. We called it the Swish 15, which was, you know, the top 15 of the 20, uh, 25, 2026, 20, 2027 20, class. Um, you know, we had some scouts there. We had, you know, Ben McCauley helped me out. Ralston Turner, Kai Crutchfield. We had some nice. former pack players in there to help these kids. So we I will say one of the cool things that we did um Obviously, you do your skill work, you talk about recruiting, but we did a social media uh, station and we brought in two people, Logan Dukes, Hugo Corciani. Everybody should know Hugo, uh, Chris Corciani's son. Mm -hmm. And they held a class on, you know, how to manage their social media, the things to post, not to post. And then on top of it, they put them through an interview process. So like we they gave them some hard questions about, you know, your teammates stunk today. <laughs> You know, what's what's wrong with this guy? So how to answer some of these tough questions that Joe used to give me back in college. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how to answer this. So we did some unique things and I got a lot of really good feedback about how they kind of enjoyed that piece. And they don't really think about, you know, oh, college coaches are looking at social media or looking at this. So it was a lot of fun to kind of connect with a lot of high school kids, especially in this area. So being able to go out and watch a couple games this year will be a lot of fun. Honesty is always the best policy when dealing with me. Uh, for tomorrow, actually, on the OG proper, we have our 100th episode. I just recorded with your former coach, Mark Gottfried. He was not wistful for our time together, um, but but he enjoyed our conversation today. So there you go. That's all well, I, can, I can promise you he'll straight shoot you. So that's right. That's all. That's all you can ask for. Yeah, that's probably why you pulled me aside more so than anybody else, because I, I didn't hold back. Uh, I also smell some social media content coming. Um, I don't know if I'll be involved in a three-point shooting contest with you, but my oldest son, James, I do think can actually beat you now that you're kind of old and doughy. No. No chance. Okay. I'm just saying. I, I, I can see I could see us getting something going here for the for the winter. I I I I'll, I'll enjoy it actually. I've got a gym. I can line that up. I've got basketballs. We can, I know you we can do. Make it That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. You bring the camera. We'll put it on camera. Uh, Tanner will be home. Yes. Intern Tanner will be home. Yes. We'll, we'll make it work. Yeah. 
But right. he ain't going to beat me. I, I can tell you he's not going to beat me. I tell everybody, listen, the way you can beat me is if we shoot 10 shots, you make 10 out of 10. If you make 10 out of 10, you got a chance to beat me. If you make 9 out of 10, you're not going to beat me. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> um, appreciate you, man. And best of luck on the broadcast. You're doing a great job. Uh, happy to see that. And uh, of course, if you're not following us, you're not subscribing right there. The button's right there. Just just, just do it. It's not that hard. And uh, go check out Scott Wood. ScottWood15.com. Yep. See? Let's work on pumping your we gotta work on this just a little bit and let's send you through the station. I'll, I'll get better at it. I'm learning, I'm learning from you. So I'll, there we I'll go. Get better. There we go. Scott Wood, appreciate you. Appreciate everyone for checking us out on the Law of the Wolf. We'll be back next week for uh, a, a Thanksgiving edition of Law of the Wolf. Appreciate you all. Uh, Apple, Spotify, Google, five stars only, positive vibes only. See you next week. The Wolfpack ain't for soft, it ain't for soft people.